And that feature of brown fat tissue happens not only because of the much higher amount of mitochondria, but also the higher expression of a very interesting protein called uncoupling protein one. We have these two overall types. Now there's actually one that slips in between, between white fat and brown fat. And just as a final note on brown fat, while white fat has a metabolic rate that is so low, it's hard to detect. As a scientist, we've published those reports. Brown fat actually has a metabolic rate that is on par with what we see in skeletal muscle. Now, muscle has a pretty decent metabolic rate, and brown fat does too. It is multiple times high, like an order of magnitude, 10 times higher than what you see from white fat. Now, again, in between the two is something that is commonly called beige fat. And we even, as scientists, create this weird verb where you can take white fat and beige it, or the white fat cells have undergone beijing. So you can see how we're making this verb, this action of this process of taking the very low metabolic rate, low mitochondrial density white fat and having it start to behave kind of like brown fat. Now, white fat is the fat that we're storing on our bodies it, to a large degree. All subcutaneous fat, the pinchable jiggable, is all white fat. Visceral fat, the deeper abdominal cavity fat, is all white fat. Now, what we have found and others have found as well, we've published reports from animals and humans, you, can, you have a potential in the white fat to undergo a modest degree of beijing. So it starts to increase its mitochondrial density and some uncoupling. And we found that humans can increase their fat tissue metabolic rate from their subcutaneous fat by up to about three times simply by, in fact, by being in ketosis, actually. And we hope to do some more studies to try to optimize the timing of all of that and find out how quickly it can happen. But suffice it to say, uh, it is it, it, white fat at the subcutaneous depot is capable of undergoing this modest conversion to behave a little more like brown fat. There's no evidence to suggest that visceral fat can do that. Indeed, in our studies of animals, we did not do visceral adipose biopsies in humans. That would be very difficult to do. Um, but uh, in animals, we saw that the visceral fat did not experience this change like the subcutaneous fat did. So this is another reason <clears throat> why subcutaneous fat appears to be a little more beneficial, a little more favorable than visceral, not only because of its potential for a little more hyperplasia, allowing the fat cells to stay smaller, but also this potential for the fat cells to get a little hotter, if you will, to have a little more mitochondria and uncoupling.